Hello, today we're going to build a simple DC network, this one here. It comprises of five resistors, and we've got two parallel banks, R1, R2, R3, R4 and R5, okay? My resistors, from the resistor colour code, were 100 ohms, 22 ohms, 33 ohms, 470 ohms, and 330 ohms. From the class teaching, you will know that when we have a parallel bank of resistors, we can use a technique known as product over sum to figure out the resistance of each parallel bank. So for this first bank here, we're going to use product over sum to figure out the value, the total value of the resistance of this parallel bank here. All product over sum is, is both resistors timed together, like so, divided by the sum of both resistors. Like so. One hundred times twenty two is two thousand two hundred. One hundred plus twenty two is one hundred and twenty two. And when you do that sum on your calculator, it will come to eighteen ohms. It won't be exactly eighteen ohms. But with resistances, you always round it up to the nearest number. In effect, that means that both these two resistors here can be replaced by one resistance with a value of 18 ohms. That's the first part of our calculation. So we will take the first two resistors at the top, and they are 33 and 470, and we do product over sum with that. I've already done the calculations, as you may have guessed, just to save a little bit of time, but I'll write them out anyway. And when you do that sum, you end up with... 31 ohms. We take this 31 ohms here, which represents these two resistors, and we use it to product over sum with the third resistor in the bank. Remember our original circuit? If it makes it easier, you can redraw the circuit if it makes it clearer for you to see. Effectively, we have a circuit that looks like this. When you do the sum, it comes to 28 ohms. So we can redraw our resistor, or our resistor bank, and it can be represented by 28 ohms. The entire resistance of this bank of resistors is 28 ohms. Effectively, we have two parallel banks in series. We have two series resistances. We have 18 ohms and 28 ohms. Resistors in series are very easy to calculate. You simply add the values together. So we get 18 plus 28. Is equal to... 46 ohms. RT, the total resistance, is equal to 46 ohms. And you'll recall from earlier learning that whenever we get resistances in parallel, the resistance of that parallel bank must always be lower than the value of the lowest resistor. If it's not, you need to check your work.
When we apply a voltage across an electrical circuit, current flows through the circuit, and work is done by the circuit, and therefore we have a release of energy. If we divide energy by time, we have power, and power is measured in watts. In electrical circuits, there are three main ways of calculating power. We can either calculate the voltage times the current, or we can use the current squared times the resistance, or we can use the voltage squared divided by the resistance. Our resistors each have a maximum power dissipation of 0.25 of a watt. If you ask those resistors to do more than 0.25 of a watt of work, they will burn out. Looking at our, our circuit as a whole, we've allowed a maximum power budget of 1.25 watts. Because we've already calculated the total resistance as being 46 ohms, it makes sense to use the bottom equation here. Because we're going to use the bottom equation to figure out the maximum voltage that could be applied across this circuit. So when we re rearrange this equation, we take 46 over to the other side and multiply it by um, 1.25, we end up with 57.5. So 57.5 is equal to the voltage squared. And when you square root this side, you end up with 7.58 volts. So theoretically, the absolute maximum voltage we should apply to this circuit is 7.58 volts. You need to choose the next lowest voltage from your table. And the one that I'm going to use for this circuit will be 5 volts. The next thing you'll be asked to do is to work out the total current flowing through the circuit. So you would have, obviously, I'll sketch them out very quickly, our resistors. And we've got a voltage supply of 5 volts. And we'll get a current flowing through our circuit. Now, Ohm's law tells us that the current flowing through a circuit, I, is equal to the applied voltage across both ends of the circuit divided by the resistance, the total resistance of that circuit. And when you do that sum on your calculator, you will get a result. Mine's 0.108 amps. Your result will obviously be different because you'll have a different total resistance and probably a different voltage supply. But that's how you work out the total current, IT, flowing through the circuit. Very quickly, IT comes here. It's like a river. It gets to these resistors, and it's just like a river. It splits three ways. If the resistance is low, more current will flow through. If a resistance is high, less current will flow through. If, for example, this was 8 ohms, this was 4 ohms, and this one was 2 ohms, these three resistors, then we would have four times as much current flowing through this, this resistor as we would have through this resistor. Or two times as much current flowing through this resistor as we would this resistor. When the current has flown through these, they all joins back up again here, and then it splits in two ways, and then it ends up back at the power supply. Just like that. Firstly, though, we're going to calculate the voltage across R5. And we're also going to measure the current running through R3. Now, you recall two things. Firstly, that voltage is always measured in parallel. So the voltage must be measured in parallel across this bank of resistors here. And current must be measured in series. So if I've got the current flowing into this parallel bank here, it must flow through an ammeter, through the resistor, and on through the rest of the circuit. We will start with the voltage. You will recall that this entire parallel bank of resistors, the two resistors, is equal to 18 ohms. 
So we can use that 18 ohms to calculate the voltage dropped across this bank of resistors here. Recall, Ohm's law tells us that voltage, the voltage dropped across a component, a resistive component, is equal to the current flowing times the resistance. Now what we have to be aware of is the current flowing through this bank is the current that is flowing through the entire circuit. It's the current that we've already calculated to be 0 0.108 amps. The resistance of this parallel bank is equal to 18 ohms. Therefore, the voltage dropped across this bank is simply 0.108 times 18. The voltage dropped across this bank is 1.95 volts. Now, a very quick check of this, what we could do is we could work out, very quickly work out the volt drop across the other bank. And if both volt drops added together equal 5 volts, we know we've done it correctly. So we know that the resistance of the other bank is 28. So in our calculator, we can just plonk in 28, times it by the circuit current, 0.108. 3.024. So when we add this voltage together and this voltage together, we get approximately very close to 5 volts. That's known as Kirchhoff's law for further reference. Now the current flowing through this resistor, we have to go back to Ohm's law again. Ohm's law tells us that the current flowing through a component is equal to the voltage applied divided by the resistance. As luck would have it, we just calculated the voltage applied across this bank of resistors here. And we calculated it to be 3.024 volts. You'll recall from an earlier video that the voltage applied across a parallel bank is applied equally to each resistor. So the 3.024 volts is applied across this resistor, it's applied across this resistor, and of course it's applied across this resistor. So the current can be calculated by using the 3.024 volts and simply dividing the value of this resistance into it. This resistor, you'll recall, has a value of 330 ohms. So on the calculator, that comes out at 9.16 um, times 10 to the minus 3. Now, to write that as a number that most people would understand, it's very simple. All we do, the minus 3 means we go 0 point, so 0, that's 1, point, Zero two zero three nine one six. And in milliamps, that would be nine milliamps, nine point one six milliamps.